Hello and welcome back to another video on Inkscape. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at the transform tool, how we can use it to move, scale, rotate, skew objects um, and do it accurately. So we'll be using measurements. Stay tuned and we'll run through the options. So starting with a blank canvas, I'm just going to draw out a square. So I'm going to click on the rectangle tool. I'm going to hold down my control button and I'm just going to drag out a square so we've got something to work with. I now want to open up my transform dialog box. So if we go up to object, come down and at the bottom here we've got transform. Click on that and that will pop up our transform panel. So in here you can see we've got several different uh, tabs that we can run through. I'll run through all of them. We've got move, scale, rotate, skew and matrix. So starting with move, with move we can either move objects absolute, so we tell it exactly where we want it to go to. So say we wanted to move it back to the origin at zero, zero. So we've got zero on the y-axis here and zero on the x. So when you move something, it's always the coordinate of the top left-hand corner of your bounding box that goes to the set coordinate that you put into your move, move box up here. So if we... We turn off relative for the time being. So let's apply that and see what happens. So there we go. So the top left hand corner of our square has gone back to zero, zero. So in addition to using absolute values, we can also make relative moves. So if we click on the relative move box down here, we can move things relative to the position they're in at the moment. So we may want to move it along 50 on the X. So we could say we move 50 along here. Press apply and it moves it along 50. If we want to do it again, we can press apply again and it'll move it along another 50. So that's how the relative move works. Now we can move these in a selection of different units. So you've got a choice of whatever you want to use up the side here. Uh, the other thing that's visible at the moment is we've got this apply to each object separately. Now this, if we hover over it, this only works for scale, rotate and skew. So move, this doesn't apply. So I think that covers everything on move. If we go along to scale, so in scale we've got a similar layout. We've got uh, width and height that we can scale. We've got the different units we can use. We can either do it as a percentage of its current size, or we can do it as an absolute value using one of the, one of the other measurements. So we'll stick to percentage for the time being. So I wanted to make it 150% of its current width. We can press apply and that increases the width by 50%. We can do the same height and width. I'm going to do a compress control Z to step back, to get it back to a, a square. So we can do those independently or if we wanted to scale and keep, keep it a perfect square, we can put this scale proportionately down the bottom. So if we click on that, so now whenever we scale it, it would be the last measurement we put in, it would do for both. So if we wanted it at 150%, say I want it at 120%, and I'll put it in the width. So we press apply now, it'll increase it by 120%, and it'll do that for the height and the width because I've, I'm scaling proportionately. It's always the last value you enter. So if I put in here 100%, and then I went down to height, and change that to 150%. Because height is the last value that I entered, when I press apply, and we've got the scale proportionally ticked, it will change it to 150% in both directions. Um, what else can we do with scale? Oh, so we've got, with this one, we can use the apply to each object separately. So if, for example, we press Control D to duplicate our square, get our selection tool, we'll just move it across so we've got two. So if we select both squares together, we can now scale them together. So we zoom out a bit, we can scale them together. So we can scale it by 150% and this would be 150% of the group. When we're using scale, it always scales from the center. So a scale outwards from the center. So 
we press apply with both of them selected and you can see it increases out from the center of the group if we click on the apply to each object separately then it will expand out from the center of each object so if you press apply now they'll stay in the same location but expand out from the center of each of the objects independently so that covers scaling so I'm just going to reduce that down again so we're a, a better size so we'll move on to rotate and have a look at rotate with rotate we've got an angle and we don't have a relative or anything else it is always relative so we can't do an absolute angle so we can't say I want this set at 45 degrees we can say can you rotate it 40 45 degrees from its current position so again we can do this all of the objects together so it rotates around the center of rotation for the group or we can do them independently so it would rotate around the center of rotation for each of the objects independently up here we can choose whichever um, angle we want or whatever unit for the angles we want we've got turns degrees radians or gradients whichever uh, you prefer personally I generally work with degrees um, you can rotate it anti-clockwise or you can rotate it clockwise so if we rotate these by 45 degrees we rotate it clockwise and we've got both selected we turn off the apply to each object separately so we're going to rotate it as a group so if we press apply now that rotates our whole group around the rotational center for the group if we now click on apply to each object separately instead of rotating them around each other all they're going to do is rotate around their their center of rotation so if we apply it now so now you can see they just rotate around their own center of rotation because you're working around a center of rotation let's just click off of this for a minute we just select one of them actually I'll delete one we double click on this to get our uh, rotation handles and our rotational center because we are moving around our rotational center we can drag our rotational center off we'll come out a little bit so now we've got it set at 45 degrees we're going clockwise we've got degrees set so I'm going to press Control D to duplicate our square I'm then going to press apply and it's rotated 45 degrees around our center of rotation so by doing this we can press Control D again press apply Control D apply and we can put our squares around a circle so this method's quite nice for rotating things around circles because we can set literally any angle we want but the last thing I wanted to mention about uh, rotation if we had some obscure shape so if we got our sorry so if we got our bezier tool and had a random shape so now we've got a random shape we may want this face here to be at 45 degrees we can do it using guides uh, next week's video is going to cover guides or we can rotate it round using our transform tool but we need to know how far we've got to rotate it so one way we can do this is if we come down to the bottom here this is how it's set up on mine we click on this we've got zoom and measure if we click on measure we can come up I've got snapping enabled snapping to cusp nodes so we snap to this one and I'm just going to drag it along so it snaps to the other end so now we've got an angle unfortunately at the moment we can't increase the size of our labels in Inkscape that's something that I'm sure will come out in future versions but at the moment we can't change the label size so it's a little bit unclear to read unless you zoom right in so one way we can zoom in to read it uh, if you're in Windows in the bottom left hand corner of your keyboard there's a Windows button if you press on the Windows button and holding the Windows button down click on the plus by your uh, number pad you'll get a magnifier up here now you can just press this to increase the size so you can see now that we're at 28.52 degrees so we get rid of that so now we know the angle if we want to increase that angle so it's down to 45 degrees we need to work out the angle that we've got to rotate by pop up our little calculator so we could say 45 minus the angle that we got there so 28.52 equals 
16.48. So we can come up then and just put in here 16.48. Put it in degrees. We want to rotate it clockwise. Press apply. And we should now have that at 45 degrees. We can check that by getting our measurement tool again. Measure. Sorry. Come up, snap to that one, drag down to the bottom. And as you can see, well, you probably can't see, but we press our Windows button again and the plus, And we're now at 45 degrees. So with a little bit of extra work, you can get things to the exact angles that you want. So that's rotation covered. Next one in our... Our list is skew. So with skew, skew basically just squashes over the shape. So you can do it either uh, horizontally or vertically. And um, the little symbols to the side of horizontal and vertical kind of illustrate how it works. You can either do it as an angle. So you can squash it over by a certain angle or you can move it over by a certain distance or a percentage. But um, we stick with angle for the time being. So say we want to move, skew it by 10 degrees horizontally. When we skew, it skews about the um, rotational center. So depending on where your rotational center is, depends on how it's going to skew. So, so if we skew it by 10 degrees, it's going to skew around the rotational center. So the bottom is going to go one way and the top's going to go the other. We can see this if we drag in a guide, snap it to the side. We can press apply and you can see the bottom's gone one way. Top's gone back the other, and we've skewed by a, an angle of 10 degrees. So again, we have the option to apply this to objects separately, or we can apply it to all of the selected objects. The other option we got, of course, is a measurement. So I've changed the size of our square to 500 by 500. So now, if we skew by measurement in millimetres, we could say skew by... I want to skew horizontally by 50 millimeters. So at the moment, the width is 500. If we now press apply, you can see that it's now 550 or pretty much. This measurement here is 50 millimeters. So it's skewed it by 50 millimeters. You can of course do the same vertically, but it applies exactly the same. So again, you can skew objects independently or you can skew them as a grouped selection. So the last tab we got at the top is matrix. Every time we do a, a transformation on an object in Inkscape, it records that transformation in a three by three matrix. Um, only the top two rows of this three by three matrix are editable. And that's what we've got here. A, B, C, D control scale, rotation and skew and E and F control movement. This isn't really user friendly. This is more from the programmer's point of view. Everything we're going to do, it's a lot more user friendly to use the move, scale, rotate and skew. So I'm not going to go into Matrix. If you wanted a bit better description, you can have a look in the glossary of the Inkscape manual. If you go up to help, you can go into the manual and have a look at that. So I think that covers everything I wanted to talk about in this video. Thanks again for watching and I shall see you in the next video.